Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to learn how to create your metadata account when you are working in the MediEd system. Before we get started, I wanted to give you a little bit of background on MediEd. Um, MediEd is a in-kind program where Metadata has agreed to partner with the University of North Carolina in Wilmington, Durham Technical Community College, and Campbell University to provide students and faculty access to their Metadata RAVE EDC system for the purposes of experiential learning. If you would like to know more about the MediEd program, you can follow this link to learn about MediEd. If you're not familiar with metadata, I wanted to make sure that you had a little background on the company itself. So metadata, in addition to the other uh, software that it provides, has a clinical sciences platform that includes electronic data capture, clinical trial management systems, and electronic clinical outcome systems. Again, if you want to learn more about metadata, you can click on this link to get their corporate overview. But I think it is important for you to understand that metadata is one of the most widely used systems in the clinical research industry. They have more than 2,000 customers. More than 27,000 trials have been run in metadata. They conduct studies in 156 countries, and over 40% of sponsor-initiated trials in 2021 were run in metadata. In addition, metadata was used to support 64% of the novel or new drugs approved by the FDA in 2021, and 13 of the top 15 medicines sold in 2020 relied on metadata's technology. So in short, having exposure to metadata is going to give you a comfort level working with one of the most widely used EDC systems in the clinical research industry. And you'll also find that even if you work in a another system, your experiences in metadata through MediEd will help you understand the functionality of electronic data capture systems. So you can transfer that skill. In this video, I'm going to show you how to locate your account creation invitation email, log into metadata, create your account, and then access the iMetadata study that you have been invited to. Before we get started, I wanted to take a second and point out a few things about that account creation invitation email. First, the email will always come from metadata notifications. So regardless of who you might have asked to provide you access to the study, when you go to look for the email, you need to understand that it will have been generated by the metadata software itself, and so the sender will always show as metadata notifications. In addition, when you get the email, you need to read through it carefully. First, you'll want to make sure that you have been invited to the study that you expect to be working on, so check to see the study that you've been invited to. Make note of the link that will allow you to activate your account. And also, take a moment and document your metadata user account number. You are going to need this number if in the future you have to contact the metadata help desk. You might need help with with a technical issue or if for some reason your account is deactivated, you can have metadata reactivated, but you'll need your user account number to do it. And check to see if you received a welcome email with any additional information about the study or URL that you've been given access to. Now we are going to take a look at the metadata system itself through the email. So you can see here I searched for from metadata notifications and this brought me to my email. I've made note of my account information, the study that I'm being invited to, and the welcome message. And now I'm going to click to activate the account. The first page I come to asks me if I'm new to iMetadata. You need to have an account to access iMetadata, and if you don't have one, then you're going to create your account now. 
Once you have clicked on that screen, you will come to the iMetadata account creation area. So you will fill out that information. It is important that you select your time zone. And you can also collect a language or, or select a language that you would like to have as your default language. Your password, and I will be changing this. must have at least eight characters, one uppercase letter, one lowercase letter, and one number. You have the option of applying a PIN code, but you're not required to, but you do need a secondary contact number. And this is to incorporate uh, two-factor authentication if necessary. Once you have all of the information that you would like to enter, then you click on activate your account. And this brings you to your sign-in area. You can see I have multiple accounts. And you click into your sign-in when you're ready. You will next be asked to read the metadata terms of use, and it is important that you read these. Um, in particular, if you're an investigator, you need to understand that Part A is applicable to you, and if you work for a sponsor, that Part B is also applicable. If you're not certain, please check with your uh, employer. One of the things that you need to understand is you cannot provide any third-party access to individuals on this website, and you must keep your password and access to the uh, study area secure and complete, so you may not share that. Also, metadata does comply with the uh, general data privacy regulation for the EU as well as the privacy shield. In part B. And finally, you need to be very aware that when using metadata, your electronic signature is always going to be a legally binding signature that reflects your acknowledgement and agreement when it appears. In this case, it appears asking me to confirm my acknowledgement that I have read and understand the metadata in terms of use. I'm going to say I agree. You will also be asked to enable your two-factor authentication. I'm going to choose the text message option. I need to re-enter my phone information. The system will send me my code. I will be asked to enter my code, 
which I am doing now. And I now have my two-factor authentication. So you can see that I have successfully enabled this here. And now I'm going to navigate to the home screen. And in my home screen, you can see that I have access to the Campbell University development area, but that I need to take my required e-learning training in order to access my site. You can also see here in my task box the two e-learnings that I need to complete in order to access the site itself. Once those are completed, then I will be able to go into my site and work with the data. If you have any questions about the account creation process, please feel free to reach out to me.